Jeffrey Epstein may be alive. That's a statement that has been repeated over and over. But is it really true? Did Jeffrey Epstein really die by suicide? In fact, here's his own brother calling BS on the autopsy reports. And four and a half years later, you have no answers at all on none. any of these questions. None, none. The autopsy photographs show that the ligature mark on Jeff's neck is in the middle of his neck and goes straight back. As if someone put a rope around his neck and strangled him. The official ruling stated that he died by hanging, but this conclusion has faced challenges and conspiracy theories. And today, we'll explore everything there is to know. Let's get started. Jeffrey Epstein, alive. Epstein, a wealthy financier and convicted sex offender, was found unresponsive in his jail cell at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in 2019. One of the key factors that have raised eyebrows is the series of violations of normal jail procedures on the night Epstein died. It was revealed that the cameras in front of his cell malfunctioned, conveniently leaving no visual evidence of what transpired during those crucial moments. This glaring lapse in security has led many to question whether foul play was involved and whether Epstein's death was a carefully orchestrated cover-up. Adding to the skepticism is the alleged negligence and misconduct of the jail officials responsible for Epstein's well-being. The United States Department of Justice's Inspector General's investigation report criticized these officials for their failure to properly monitor Epstein and ensure his safety. This report highlighted a broken system that allowed for such a high-profile inmate to meet such a tragic end. The negligence displayed by those entrusted with Epstein's care only adds to the doubt surrounding the official ruling. Epstein lawyers and family have also expressed deep reservations about the suicide ruling. They argue that Epstein's demeanor and behavior leading up to his death were not indicative of someone who was contemplating suicide. Furthermore, Epstein had a bail hearing scheduled, which gave him hope for a potential release. This raises questions about his motivation to take his own life at that particular moment. Conspiracy theories have also emerged, suggesting that Epstein may have faked his own death to escape justice or to protect himself and his powerful associates. Epstein had had long boasted about having compromising information on influential figures, and his connections to politicians, celebrities, and business moguls have only added fuel to the fire. The possibility that Epstein's death was a carefully orchestrated plan to silence him and prevent him from testifying against these powerful. Individuals cannot be dismissed outright. Online conspiracy theorists have even gone as far as claiming that the images of Epstein in transport to the hospital were of a body double, further deepening the mystery surrounding his demise. While these claims may seem far-fetched, they highlight the extent to which doubts and speculation have permeated the public consciousness. It is important to note that the official ruling of suicide by hanging has been supported by the New York City Medical Examiner and the Justice Department Inspector General. However, the inconsistencies, violations of prison procedures, and doubts expressed by Epstein's lawyers and family have cast a shadow of doubt over this conclusion. As we dig deeper into the mysterious case of Jeffrey Epstein, it becomes evident that his connections to powerful individuals may hold the key to understanding the motives behind his alleged suicide. Epstein's vast network of connections spanned across the realms of politics, business, and entertainment. From former presidents to renowned business tycoons and A-list celebrities, Epstein had cultivated relationships with some of the most influential people in the world. This raised questions about the extent of his knowledge and the potential damage he could inflict by revealing compromising information. One of the most notable figures in Epstein's circle was Prince Andrew, the Duke of York. The Prince's association with Epstein Epstein has been widely scrutinized, and allegations of his involvement in Epstein's illicit activities have tarnished his reputation. If Epstein were to testify and provide evidence against Prince Andrew, it could have had severe consequences for the royal family and the British establishment. Epstein's connections also extended to the political sphere, with former President Bill Clinton being among the most prominent names. Clinton's association with Epstein has been a subject of controversy, and rumors of his involvement in Epstein's activities have circulated for years. If Epstein were to reveal damaging information about Clinton or any other high-ranking political figures, it could have had far-reaching implications, potentially shaking the foundations of the political establishment. In the world of business, Epstein had ties to numerous influential individuals, including billionaire Leslie Wexner, the founder of L Brands. Wexner and Epstein had a close relationship, with Epstein even serving as a financial advisor to Wexner. If Epstein were to expose any illicit financial dealings or secrets involving Wexner or other powerful business magnates, it 
it could have caused irreparable damage to their reputations and financial empires. The potential motives for these powerful individuals to silence Epstein are manifold. Protecting their reputations, preserving their positions of power, and safeguarding their vast wealth are just a few of the reasons that may have driven them to take drastic measures. However, the sheer magnitude of Epstein's network and the potential implications of his testimony cannot be ignored. The possibility that powerful individuals conspired to silence Epstein to prevent him from revealing damaging information remains a compelling theory. However, an interesting aspect was when in a resurfaced podcast episode, rapperist George Santos entertained the possibility that Jeffrey Epstein, the notorious convicted sex offender who died in 2019, might still be alive. While acknowledging the prevailing belief that Epstein is deceased, Santos expressed doubts and joined the chorus of conspiracy theorists, suggesting that Epstein did not die by suicide, but was instead murdered. This intriguing theory sparked speculation about the elusive Epstein and the potential implications of his alleged survival. Santos ventured into uncharted territory by musing about the potential survival of Jeffrey Epstein. He acknowledged that he personally believes Epstein is deceased, but intriguingly added, I wouldn't put it past me that he's still walking around us. The congressman's curiosity raises questions that may seem far-fetched, yet captivate the imagination in a world that thrives on conspiracies. Now, the death of Jeffrey Epstein not only sent shockwaves through the public, but also had a profound impact on ongoing sex trafficking investigations and the urgent need for prison system reforms. Epstein's arrest and subsequent death shifted the focus of investigations from him to his alleged associates, such as Ghislaine Maxwell. Maxwell, a longtime confidant of Epstein, was arrested in July 2020 for her alleged involvement in recruiting and abusing girls in a sex trafficking ring. The arrest of Maxwell provided a glimmer of hope for the victims and survivors as it signaled a continued pursuit of justice and a determination to hold all responsible parties accountable. Epstein's death also exposed glaring flaws and negligence within the prison system. The violations of normal jail procedures on the night of his death, including the malfunctioning cameras and the alleged negligence and misconduct of jail officials, highlighted the urgent need for reforms. The United States Department of Justice's Inspector General's investigation report criticized the officials for their failure to properly monitor Epstein and ensure his safety. This report shed light on a broken system that allowed for such a high-profile inmate to meet such a tragic end. The public outcry following Epstein's death led to widespread calls for prison system reforms. Advocates and lawmakers demanded increased transparency, accountability, and oversight to prevent similar incidents from occurring in the future. Attorney General William Barr took swift action in response to the public's concerns, removing the director of the Federal Bureau of Prisons. This move signaled a recognition of the need for change and a commitment to addressing the systemic issues that allowed Epstein's death to happen. Epstein's death also had a profound impact on the survivors of his abuse and the broader conversation surrounding sex trafficking. The dismissal of all charges against Epstein following his death left many victims without the opportunity for their stories to be heard in court. This further highlighted the need for comprehensive support systems for survivors and a commitment to dismantling the networks that perpetuate sex trafficking. The case of Jeffrey Epstein served as a wake-up call, exposing the dark underbelly of power, influence, and exploitation. It revealed the vulnerabilities within the justice system and the urgent need for reforms to ensure that justice is served and survivors are protected. In the aftermath of Epstein's death, the phrase Epstein didn't kill himself became a rallying cry, symbolizing the public's skepticism towards the official narrative and their demand for truth and accountability. The phrase became a viral meme, appearing in various contexts and serving as a reminder that the fight for justice is far from over. Epstein's death also sparked a wave of documentaries and media coverage, with Netflix's Jeffrey Epstein, Filthy Rich being one of the most notable productions. These documentaries shed light on the intricate web of power, abuse, and corruption surrounding Epstein, further fueling public interest and awareness. As we move forward, it is crucial to remember the survivors and continue the fight against sex trafficking. Epstein's death may have closed one chapter, but it has ignited a movement for change and a determination to ensure that no one is above the law. But who was this man and how did he become a beacon of scandal, pain, and controversy? Who was Jeffrey Epstein? Jeffrey Epstein's early life and career were marked by a series of intriguing twists and turns that would eventually lead him down a path of scandal and infamy. Born and raised in New York City, Epstein grew up in a middle-class family with his father working as a groundskeeper and his mother as a school aide. Despite his humble beginnings, Epstein displayed an early aptitude for academics and a keen interest in finance. After graduating from high school, Epstein enrolled at Cooper Union, a prestigious college in Manhattan. However, he soon dropped out and embarked on a different path. 
he secured a teaching position at the Dalton School, an elite private institution on the Upper East Side. It was during his time at Dalton that Epstein began to cultivate connections with wealthy and influential individuals, setting the stage for his future endeavors. Epstein's teaching career, however, was short-lived. Eager to explore new opportunities, he transitioned into the world of finance and joined the renowned investment bank Bear Stearns. Despite lacking a college degree, Epstein's sharp intellect and natural charisma allowed him to quickly rise through the ranks. He proved himself to be a skilled and ambitious employee, taking on various roles within the firm. As Epstein's career flourished, he began to develop an elite social circle, rubbing shoulders with some of the most powerful and influential people in the financial industry. It was through these connections that he gained access to clients with high net worth, including Leslie Wexner, the chairman and CEO of L Brands. Wexner would become a key figure in Epstein's life life, entrusting him with the management of his vast fortune. Buoyed by his success at Bear Stearns and armed with the trust of his wealthy clients, Epstein eventually decided to strike out on his own. In 1982, he founded his own financial management firm, J. Epstein & Company. The firm catered exclusively to clients with a net worth of at least $1 billion, offering a range of services from tax planning to investment advice. Epstein's firm quickly gained a reputation for its exclusivity and discretion. He prided himself on providing personalized attention to each client, tailoring investment strategies to their specific needs and desires. This approach, coupled with his connections to the wealthy elite, allowed Epstein to amass a considerable fortune of his own. Jeffrey Epstein's vast wealth afforded him a luxurious lifestyle, complete with multiple properties and a reputation for philanthropy. His properties, including a mansion in New York City, a residence in Palm Beach, Florida, and private islands in the U.S. Virgin Islands, became symbols of his opulence and served as the backdrop for his controversial activities. Epstein's most notable Notable property was his mansion in New York City, located on the Upper East Side. The seven-story townhouse, valued at an estimated $56 million, was a lavish residence that showcased his extravagant taste. The mansion featured numerous rooms, including a grand entrance hall, a library, a gym, and a sprawling terrace. It became a focal point of his social life, hosting parties attended by influential figures from various industries. In addition to his New York City mansion, Epstein owned a sprawling estate in Palm Beach, Florida. This property, situated Situated in an exclusive neighborhood, boasted a large mansion and extensive grounds. It was here that Epstein allegedly carried out many of his illicit activities, luring underage girls to his residence under the guise of educational opportunities. The Palm Beach property became synonymous with the dark secrets that Epstein harbored. Epstein's private islands in the U.S. Virgin Islands, including Little St. James and Great St. James, added another layer of intrigue to his story. These secluded retreats provided him with a sense of privacy and seclusion, away from prying eyes. The islands were equipped with luxurious amenities, including villas, pools, and even a helicopter pad. However, they also became the setting for disturbing allegations of sexual abuse and exploitation. While Epstein's properties were symbols of his wealth and excess, his philanthropic activities attempted to present a different side of his persona. He positioned himself as a benefactor of science and education, donating substantial sums of money to various institutions and causes. Epstein claimed to be passionate about advancing scientific research and supporting education educational initiatives. Epstein's philanthropic endeavors included donations to prestigious institutions such as Harvard University and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. He established the Jeffrey Epstein Six Foundation, which aimed to fund scientific research and exploration. Epstein also cultivated relationships with renowned scientists and academics, seeking to align himself with the intellectual elite. However, questions arose regarding the source and extent of Epstein's wealth, casting doubt on the true nature of his philanthropy. Some critics argued that his donations were a means to gain social acceptance and access to influential circles, rather than a genuine commitment to philanthropic causes. Epstein's interests extended beyond traditional philanthropy. He also had an interest in eugenics and transhumanism, controversial fields that explore the manipulation and enhancement of human biology. These interests, coupled with his connections to scientists and academics, added another layer of complexity to his persona and raised questions about the motivations behind his philanthropic endeavors. However, Epstein's success in the financial world was not without its controversies. In 2003, he became embroiled in a legal battle with the founder of Victoria's Secret, Leslie Wexner, over a failed business deal. The dispute would later be settled out of court, but it marked a turning point in Epstein's life. It was in 2005 that Epstein's dark secret life began to unravel. A woman reported to the police that her 14-year-old stepdaughter had been taken to Epstein's mansion and sexually abused. This revelation set off a 13-month undercover investigation 
that would expose the extent of Epstein's criminal activities. The investigation revealed a disturbing pattern of sexual abuse and exploitation of underage girls. Epstein allegedly used his vast wealth and connections to lure vulnerable young girls into his web, promising them opportunities for education and career advancement. Instead, he subjected them to horrific acts of abuse and manipulation. In 2008, Epstein faced his first major legal battle when he was charged with multiple counts of unlawful sex with minors and sexual abuse. The charges stemmed from his involvement in a vast sex trafficking operation where he allegedly brought underage girls to his mansions for sexual encounters. The victims, who were often vulnerable and from disadvantaged backgrounds, were lured in with promises of money, education, and career opportunities. However, Epstein's arrest in 2006 on state felony charges of procuring a minor for prostitution and solicitation of a prostitute marked the beginning of a highly publicized legal saga. Despite the gravity of the charges, Epstein pleaded not guilty and assembled a formidable defense team that included prominent lawyers such as Alan Dershowitz and Ken Starr. The stage was set for a legal battle that would captivate the nation. During the trial, the prosecution presented a mountain of evidence against Epstein, including testimonies from numerous victims who bravely came forward to share their harrowing experiences. These testimonies painted a disturbing picture of Epstein's modus operandi and the extent of his abuse. It became clear that he had meticulously orchestrated a network of enablers who facilitated his crimes, ensuring his victims remained silent and powerless. However, despite the overwhelming evidence against him, Epstein managed to secure a controversial non-prosecution agreement in 2007. This agreement, negotiated by his high-powered legal team, granted him immunity from federal charges and effectively ended the FBI's investigation into his sex crimes. The deal was widely criticized for its leniency and for violating the rights of Epstein's victims who were denied the opportunity for justice and closure. During his time in jail, Epstein was granted an unprecedented level of leniency, being allowed to leave the facility for up to 12 hours a day, six days a week, on a so-called work release program. This arrangement, which violated the sheriff's own policies, further fueled public outrage and accusations of preferential treatment. Epstein served only 13 months of his sentence before being released on probation. As a registered sex offender, he was required to check in with the New York Police Department every 90 days. However, this requirement was never enforced, raising further questions about the handling of his case by law enforcement authorities. The lenient treatment and the non-prosecution agreement sparked public outrage and renewed efforts to seek justice for Epstein's victims. The survivors, emboldened by the Me Too movement and a growing awareness of the prevalence of sexual abuse, filed numerous civil lawsuits against Epstein and his alleged co-conspirators. These legal actions aimed to hold Epstein accountable and shed light on the systemic failures that allowed his crimes to go unchecked for so long. In response to the public outrage and the mounting evidence against Epstein, new investigations were launched to uncover the truth and ensure that justice was served. Law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, reopened their inquiries into Epstein's activities and his connections to powerful individuals. The focus shifted from Epstein as an individual to the potential co-conspirators who may have enabled his crimes. One of the key figures in the investigations was Ghislaine Maxwell, Epstein's longtime associate and alleged co-conspirator. Maxwell was later arrested and charged with federal crimes related to her involvement in Epstein's sex trafficking operation. Her arrest brought renewed attention to the case and raised hopes that more answers would be revealed. The investigations also delved into Epstein's vast network of influential individuals, including politicians, celebrities, and business tycoons. The extent of his connections and the potential involvement of these figures in his activities became a subject of intense scrutiny. The public demanded transparency and accountability, calling for a thorough examination of the power dynamics that allowed Epstein to operate with impunity. However, even after Epstein died, his case was far from over. In January of 2023, documents with a so-called Epstein list relating to the case were released and literally broke the internet. The Epstein documents. Epstein used his wealth and power to exploit underage girls for his own pleasure. But what is the true extent of his network? Who are the individuals on his list, and what secrets do they hold? Well, an interesting part of the new wave of information released relating to him is his passport. Stay with me. Let me walk you through it. In the early 1980s, Jeffrey Epstein, an unknown bushy-haired broker from Brooklyn, began his journey into the world of wealth and power. Little did the world know at the time, but Epstein's passport applications and his penchant for reporting lost passports would become a recurring 
theme in his life. The earliest application in Epstein's passport records dates back to April 1983. It was during this time that Epstein sought to replace a lost passport just in time for an upcoming trip to London. In barely legible handwriting, the then 30-year-old Epstein listed his occupation as a banker and his address as an apartment on Manhattan's Upper East Side. The stapled color photograph accompanying the application depicted Epstein, who would later become known for his loose-fitting tracksuits in a crisp black suit and glossy tie. But Epstein's passport troubles didn't end there. In the mid-1980s, he reported his US passport lost or stolen not once, but twice. The first incident occurred when Epstein left his passport behind in a London black taxi. The second incident happened when his passport was stolen out of his jacket pocket as he dined at a restaurant. These explanations were provided by Epstein himself in the files. In an application to replace his passport on February 26, 1985, Epstein reported that he was then residing in London. The address he provided, which had not previously been associated with Epstein, was located in an area surrounded by foreign embassies. This raises questions about Epstein's connections and activities during his time in London. In his affidavit of loss, Epstein indicated that he had a flight booked the next day to Sweden. Interestingly, less than a week later, former Miss Sweden Eva Anderson hosted a televised musical contest in the country. Video footage of the event, unearthed by a YouTube user named Green Clown 2021, shows Epstein in the audience, clapping half-heartedly between musical acts. It was later revealed during Ghislaine Maxwell's criminal trial in 2021 that Anderson and Epstein had dated on and off in the 1980s, adding another layer of intrigue to Epstein's international connections. Epstein's passport applications and his repeated reports of lost passports paint a picture of a man who was constantly on the move. His early years were marked by a series of passport mishaps, whether it was losing them or having them stolen. These incidents, along with his international travel, hint at a life of intrigue and secrecy. As we dig deeper into the shocking truth behind Jeffrey Epstein's list, we uncover his long-standing connections to influential figures. One of Epstein's notable connections was with Ehud Barak, a former Prime Minister of Israel. Barak publicly acknowledged visiting Epstein more than 10, but much less than 100 times, including a visit to Epstein's private estate in the US Virgin Islands. However, Barak was quick to clarify that he had never attended a party with Epstein or met with him in the company of women or girls. The nature of their relationship remains a subject of speculation and intrigue. Epstein's connections to influential figures extended beyond Barack. In 2003, one of his corporate representatives wrote a letter stating that for both safety and business reasons, it is imperative that Mr. Epstein have the necessary flexibility of a second passport. This request was made to the U.S. State Department as Epstein sought to obtain a second passport to avoid conflicting visa stamps when traveling to Israel and certain Arab states, including Jordan and Saudi Arabia. State Department policies permit certain frequent international travelers to carry a second passport, particularly in cases where a visa stamp from one country might prohibit entry into another. However, Epstein's intentions to travel to Israel and the Arab states raise questions about the nature of his relationships and the purpose of his visits. A New York Times columnist reported in 2019 that Epstein had boasted, without evidence, of speaking often with Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. Arabia. As part of his request for an additional passport, Epstein submitted travel itineraries indicating that he had booked two first-class trips in the spring of 2005. The first trip was from London to Tel Aviv on March 29th of that year. Epstein also provided details of a journey that would take him on April 7th, 2005 to Istanbul, where he would connect through Baku, Azerbaijan to Kabul. While the records do not indicate whether Epstein actually made this trip, it is worth noting that on the day of his scheduled departure from Kabul, the late former U.S. Defense Secretary Secretary Donald Rumsfeld made an unannounced visit to the Afghan capital for a joint press conference with President Hamid Karzai. There is no evidence to suggest that Rumsfeld's visit and Epstein's travel plans were connected in any way. Epstein's connections and his applications for a second passport reveal a web of intrigue and secrecy surrounding his international activities. The shocking truth behind Jeffrey Epstein's list takes a dark turn as we explore the impact of his sex offender status on his ability to obtain and use passports. Despite his conviction, for solicitation of an underage girl in Florida. Epstein's status as a registered sex offender did little to hinder his international travel until much later. It wasn't until Congress passed the International Megan's Law in 2016 that the government had the authority to revoke the passports of sex offenders. This legislation aimed to protect minors from exploitation by requiring registered sex offenders to reapply for a special passport that carried a notice inside, stating, the bearer was convicted of a sex offense against a minor and is a covered
discovered sex offender. Additionally, the law strengthened the requirement for registered sex offenders to provide advance notice of all intended international travel. Epstein's files indicate that a passport issued to him in 2016, valid for 10 years, was revoked under the International Megan's Law. These revocations came as a result of his sex offender status and the government's efforts to monitor and restrict the travel of individuals convicted of sex offenses against minors. However, prior to the implementation of the International Megan's Law, Epstein's sex offender status had little impact on his ability to obtain and use passports. His connections, wealth, and power allowed him to navigate the system and continue his international travels without significant hindrance. In fact, Epstein's files reveal that he had multiple passports in his possession. When FBI agents executed a search warrant at his New York home, they discovered three U.S. passports and one Austrian passport, all bearing Epstein's picture. However, the Austrian passport had someone else's name and an address in Saudi Arabia. Epstein's defense attorneys claimed that the two expired U.S. passports were no longer valid, and the foreign passport was given to him by a friend for personal protection during his travels in the Middle East. They argued that some Jewish Americans were informally advised to carry identification, bearing a non-Jewish name, when traveling internationally in case of hijacking. These revelations raised disturbing questions about Epstein's use of multiple passports and the extent of his international activities. The fact that he possessed passports with different names and addresses adds another layer of complexity to his already enigmatic persona. The shocking truth behind Jeffrey Epstein's release documents takes another twist as we uncover the investigation into his international travel by the United States Marshals Service. This investigation sheds light on Epstein's frequent trips and raises questions about the true extent of his activities. Records obtained by ABC News reveal that the United States Marshals Service was looking into Epstein's foreign trips. In a January 2019 report, the investigation revealed that Epstein travels internationally quite frequently using private planes and may have failed to report all his international travel. While Epstein was apparently traveling in Southern Asia, police officers in Southern Florida were conducting their own investigation. Three weeks earlier, the parents of a 14-year-old girl had reported to the police that their daughter had been molested by a white-haired man who went by the name Jeff. This report led to a police investigation that uncovered dozens of alleged underage victims and ultimately exposed Epstein's activities as a sex offender. The fact that Epstein's international travel was under scrutiny by both the United States Marshals Service and local law enforcement highlights the magnitude of his activities and the attention they were receiving. It also raises questions about how Epstein managed to navigate the system and continue his travels despite the ongoing investigations. The investigation by the United States Marshal Service was a significant development in the case as it revealed that Epstein's international travel was not going unnoticed. However, the full extent of the findings and the implications they had on his activities remain largely unknown. The shocking truth behind Jeffrey Epstein's list reaches its climax as we delve into his arrest and the subsequent search of his New York home. These events marked a turning point in the investigation and shed light on the dark secrets that Epstein had tried so desperately to conceal. In July of 2019, Epstein's world came crashing down when he was arrested at Teterboro Airport in New Jersey. His private Gulfstream jet had just touched down from Paris, and federal authorities wasted no time in apprehending him. A federal indictment charged Epstein with conspiracy and child sex trafficking, finally bringing to light the gravity of his alleged crimes. Later that day, FBI agents executed a search warrant at Epstein's opulent New York home. What they discovered inside was nothing short of shocking. Among the items seized were a locked safe containing 48 loose diamonds and a staggering $70,000 in cash. But the most significant findings were the passports, three US passports and one Austrian passport, all bearing Epstein's picture. The search of Epstein's New York home not only revealed his vast wealth, but also raised questions about his international connections and the extent of his activities. The presence of multiple passports with different names and addresses added another layer of complexity to the already perplexing case. In conclusion, the shocking truth behind Jeffrey Epstein's list has taken us on a journey into a world of wealth, power, and unimaginable darkness. We have uncovered the unbelievable facts surrounding Epstein's passport applications, his connections to influential figures like Ehud Barak, and his efforts to obtain multiple passports to avoid conflicting visa stamps. So knowing how well this man was connected, I ask you, do you believe he actually committed suicide or somehow faked his death to escape justice? Well, we may never know. Thanks for watching. Click on the videos on your screen for similar content.